I'm your man, ladies. Yeah, that's right. Welcome to Asteroid Challenge Fight Club. Stay cool. This is a Thor News presentation. Thor News presents... Zoo. You're right, sir. Slow your rotation, stellar fool. Hit the button, baby. Party dance time. Speaking of science, ladies and gentlemen, a star is born. That's right. This is a very special moment for I, Thor of Thor News. Often, science talks about stars and how solar systems are formed. And much of that time, I say, Wow, your crash and disc theory sounds like total bullshit, bro. You know, like, you got a giant cloud of gas and a giant cloud of dust floating in outer space. They get so heavy, they collapse upon themselves and create Sun, Earth, Jupiter, Mars, Venus, Saturn, women, beer, hamburgers, fast cars. You know what I'm saying? This don't make sense. It seems like it's skipping a whole lot of steps. There's something missing in there, which they call dark matter, that conveniently works. Anyway, what I'm trying to say here, in a real roundabout way, if this is your first time, that is how I do things here, <laughs> is that, uh, yeah, so science is like, hey, we have outbursts from a newborn star. And I'm like, oh, really? I'm so excited, I'm going to make this video totally lo-fi. Normally, I put in a lot of bells and whistles, give it a lot of higher production value. This video is so special, I'm not going to do that. We're just going to look at the one photograph they gave us that helps prove their science theory of heavy gas and dust planet creation, right? We are looking on the outbursts from a newborn star. Release date, October 12th, 10 a.m. European time. This is from the European Southern Observatory. They're outreaching to me, and they touched me. So now, I'm touching you with this information. Let's read on, shall we? Let's read the official scientific mumbo-jumbo. A pair of jets protrude outwards in near perfect symmetry in this image of her big Haro object, HH-212, taken by ESO's already decommissioned infrared spectrometer and array camera. Aw, this was a happy story. But you gotta go and make me sad. The last thing we need is more decommissioned infrared telescopes. You know? The object lies in the constellation of Orion. Man, cool stuff is always going down in Orion. And let me tell you something. Orion is by far my favorite constellation in the sky. So I'll let you know that. And I might be related to it. So if you want to know the truth, yeah, I might be related to Orion. Pretty cool. Okay, where was I? Oh, and for the people who don't believe anything that ever comes out of any type of a space agency, you can say that they're telling us here the object lies. Yeah, there you go. It's a little sum for everybody. I like to do that here, Thornies. I like to try and leave everybody satisfied. And even the people who like to really don't like stuff, they get to leave here satisfied too, because they really don't like Thor News. All right, stay on target. In a denser molecule star, the hunter. Oh yeah, Orion is a hunter. He's got a bow, a sword, a bear, a dog, a bull, and a horse. Orion's a cool dude. And he was dating all seven Pleiades sisters. And then he got in trouble because they got jealous of each other and a whole war started. And then, and then some other jerk took control and then totally changed the mythology to where Orion was a bad guy. I don't know. We'll have to talk about that later. I'm going to stay on target. In a dense molecular star forming region, not far from the famous Horsehead Nebula, in regions like this, clouds of dust and gas collapse under the force of gravity, spinning faster and faster, becoming hotter and hotter until a young star ignites at the cloud's center. See? I just don't make, like, visualize that with me. Visualize all of that. And then it's spitting out all the planets in a moving forward rotation. You know, with a lot of angular movement. You ever seen an explosion do something like that before? You know, you're gonna have a grand house built. You need an architect. Hey, you know, that's just the way it goes. Any leftover material swirling around the newborn protostar comes together to form an accretion disk that will, under the right circumstances, eventually evolve from the base material for the creation of planets, asteroids, and comets. See, all you can do is think about a theory and it just don't sound that right, right? Okay. And hey, if 99% of scientists are like, hey, we were totally right about this whole dustbuster cloud explosion thing, 
creating every miracle on earth, uh, then it's okay for me, the 1% of crazy YouTubers, to be like, hey, no, I just kind of disagree, and I don't think that theory is right. I'm not saying I know exactly how Earth was created in a scientific way. I'm just saying, and yeah, I don't think you guys have a right. So don't get cocky. I mean, you can still spend the billion dollars looking for dark matter all you want, but uh, don't get cocky, okay? Leave room for the fact that you might be wrong. There we go. Although this process is still not fully understood. And this is why I get excited at this photograph, because it's like the first time they've ever said, okay, we captured a newborn star. And so that's why this is a big deal, you know? Here you go. You were looking at modern technology capturing the birth of a newborn star. Yeah, it's great. It would have been wonderful to see like 10 straight minutes of this thing, or 10 time-lapse minutes over a year, or even four photographs of it, but we got one. You know, it's about the most you can expect these days. Okay, and so I'm kind of hammering home the point, the fact that we got one photograph of this by just showing the one photograph the whole time. Like, here's science's proof of how their theory is correct with this one photograph. That's a cool photo, man. Okay. It is common that a protostar and its accretion disk, as seen here, edge on, are the cause of the jets in this image. This bow shock. I don't know I said that. The star at the center of HH212 is indeed a very young star at only a few thousand years old. And science always knows exactly how old everything is. Like, I had a scientist at my apartment once, and uh, he looked at my lamp, and he was like, that lamp is 113 years old. You know, I bought it at Walmart like two months ago, so I was pretty sure he was wrong, but man, if you want to make a scientist mad, all you got to say is like, you're wrong, bro. Anyway, what was I saying? Oh yeah, scientist knows the age of everything. And this star is only like a thousand years old, which is like stellar baby seconds, man. Stellar baby seconds. That's what we're talking about here. Stellar baby seconds. Oh, baby. All right, whatever. The jets are remarkably symmetric, with several knots appearing at relatively stable intervals. This stability suggests that the jet pulses vary quite regularly and, and over a short time scale. Maybe even as short as 30 years. Further out from the center, large bow shocks told you so. See, I'm so smart. Spread out into the interstellar space, caused by ejecting gas, colliding with dust and gas at speeds of several hundred kilometers per second. There you go, party people. We have seen a, a star, a new star is born. I can feel it. Can you? Oh. Oh. Okay. Well, God bless everybody. This has got to be a great new omen for something spectacular. All right. Talk to you soon, baby. Baby love, my baby love, a star is born. Oh, I want you. I need you, baby love. That's not making it. No way.